Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. Hi, I'm Dino, your host. Glad to see you here. To our new subscribers, thank you very much for joining our Cheaper Jeeper TV community. I appreciate the support. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to check out some of the playlists. I'm sure you'll find something interesting. Like in this week's episode, we're going to talk about the type of off-road gear you would need from beginner to expert. Let's talk about it. Okay, before we get started, just a little bit of housekeeping. I want to give a shout out to a young man named Sharia at The Source at Stone Road Mall. He helped me out with some audio difficulties I was having. I really appreciate it. Props out to you, Sharia. And if you're looking for a good cell phone deal, you should talk to him. <laughs> anyway about this week's episode about off-road gear. A couple things I want to point out. I'm not an expert, I'm a novice at this, so I'm just sharing with you what I'm learning. And of course, there are probably some experts out there watching this. If you wanted to at any point suggest some extra tips, please feel free to do so in the comment section below. It would be appreciated. Also, I just want to say that I'm not going to discuss how you use this gear as much as I'm going to itemize the kind of gear that you would need as you graduate from beginner to expert. Another really important thing is you need the gear before you need the gear. I'll let you think about that one for a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, it was on a day similar to this that I had my first off-road experience. I was driving across the field taking some bags of soil in the back of the Jeep to a garden and I got bogged down in some clay and I was down right to the frame in the mud. So I took out my first item of off-road gear to help me get out of the situation. A shovel. Now a long handled shovel would work but if you don't want to carry a long handled shovel, a shovel like this is better than no shovel at all. The other piece of off-road gear that was necessary was a jack. Now this is the stock jack that came with the Jeep. It takes up no space at all and it still does the trick. I just had to make sure I had a piece of wood underneath and I used a shovel to dig a hole under the frame so I could prop up the Jeep and I put some logs under the tires, made sure I lowered the pressure and I was able to get on my way. So the shovel and the jack are your first basic items that you would need as your off-road gear, but you're gonna want more. If you recall in the newbie video where I first went out on my real off-road experience with my local Jeep club, we learned about the importance of airing down your tires and disconnecting your sway bar links. Now, I had used my 12 volt pump here that you can see to reinflate the tires at the end of the trip and I had disconnected and connected my sway bar links just with a wrench and a 18 mil socket. But if you're intending to do more off-roading, you're gonna need a more robust pump and maybe a more efficient way to disconnect your sway bars. That's where a more robust tire inflator would come in handy. This is a Smitty built model that pumps out 5.65 cubic feet per minute of air. So it helps inflate the tires very quickly. The little 12 volt unit that I was using, that will burn out in no time at all. So this is something that you may want to get as one of your uh, first items of off-road gear as well. Not to mention, as you see in this graphic, some sway bar links, which I have on order. So that would be possibly your second stage of off-road gear acquisition. Now, if also, if you remember in the newbie video, you may have observed uh, one of the members of the club having gotten stuck in mud, and Dave, the leader of the group, gave us a tutorial on how to get unstuck from mud which involved a little bit of extra off-road gear. And that's what I'm gonna talk about now, and I consider this the third stage of off-road gear acquisition. So with this next stage of recovery gear acquisition, you would want things like a toe strap, a tree saver strap, which could also serve to extend your toe strap, 
uh, snatch block, shackles, some gloves, and you can get those bit by bit along the way when you see them on sale. But what I did was I got this all-in-one kit from Gear America, who are a sponsor of our local club. And so what happened was they had this kit get everything all together on sale and then the club also had a discount so I thought well that was a pretty convenient way to get all of these items and they are they come together in this kit I'm just going to briefly show it to you so you can see that all the items come in this bag which also serves as a winch line dampener and remember I'm just going to talk to you about the gear how to use it could be another video if you want to see that uh, you could search online or if you want make a comment in the section below if you would like me to make a video on that but let's have a look at this gear so it's got a reflective tape along the edges of this bag and then if you open up these pouches on both sides of the bag you can see the beautiful toe straps and these aren't the kind that have hooks these have loops the thing about the hooks is they could be very dangerous if something were to break those would be projectiles flying through the air and they could injure you or some property and uh, they come with these nice straps that help keep it all together and I believe these are rated for 35,000 pounds so there's the toe strap on that side there's the tree hugger strap on the other side and then on the inside are these pockets that have shackles again I believe rated for 35,000 pounds so they're really quite nice and then a snatch block here to double the power of your winch or perhaps of the winch of somebody who's helping you uh, get out of the hole and then a set of gloves in this pocket here and like I said, this bag could be used to be draped over the winch line to serve as a dampener. So that's a pretty nice uh, kit to get, to get you set well on your way with your recovery gear in a nice compact package. Okay, let's take a look at the next stage of recovery gear acquisition. No, I don't mean a dog is a recovery gear, but I have Lenny with me and he got loose and a truck was coming, so I had to pick him up. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, the last and final stage of recovery gear acquisition um, is something that uh, I was motivated to get as a result of some feedback and comments made in my Algoma video and my Ardbeg video where some of the subscribers or viewers were saying, if you're gonna be out there off-road and there's gonna be times where you might be alone, you'd be well advised to have a winch. And I started thinking about that and thought, yeah, that's true because if you're on your own and you get stuck in the mud, having a winch is like a get out of jail free card. You can just pull yourself on your own, you can pull yourself out. So I looked at a few options. For example, with the stock Sahara, has the plastic bumper you can buy a plate that mounts on the frame over top of the bumper hooks into the back of your tow hooks and then you could mount a winch on top of that but my reservation about that system was that even though it's cost effective the winch would be sitting right in front of the grill and perhaps impact the cooling of the engine and the transmission so I thought a little a little harder about it I decided I was gonna cough up a few extra hundred dollars and buy a steel bumper. Now, hang on a second here. So look at that baby. That is a Rugged Ridge HD full width steel bumper with a recessed winch plate just ready for a winch to be mounted there. And so I uh, made a, a install video that'll be coming out next week. So this is a good time to hit that subscribe button there and the alert bell so you'll be notified when that video comes out so you don't miss it. 
but I'm pretty happy with how this install went. I like the design of the bumper. I think it suits the Jeep really nicely and I can't wait also to mount the winch. And even though, like I said, I'm not an expert, I feel I'm well prepared to continue developing my off-road skills and I'd be happy for you guys to join me. So now let's go on into this week's tip segment where I'm going to share with you some ideas on how you can save some money in the acquisition of these items. Now for some cheaper jeeper tips. If after watching this video you feel like getting some gear yourself, you want to try and get it on sale. For example, the recovery gear from Gear America and the tire inflator from Smittybilt were items that I was able to purchase on sale at a discount through my Jeep Club. So being a member of a Jeep Club often will get you some club discounts, so that's good to know. But also taking advantage of some special sales like Black Friday, which is coming soon, and Christmas, of course, are great opportunities to get things on sale if you plan ahead. But what if you're watching this video and you have all this motivation and you missed the Black Friday sales? What do you do? Well, interestingly, a lot of your favorite Jeep gear online retailers have a little algorithm on their websites that some of you may not know. If you, for example, choose a couple items and put it in the shopping cart, but then do not complete your sale, but just leave it there because you're not sure if you're going to get it or not, these websites have algorithms that flag your profile and very often you'll end up receiving an email a few days later with a discount to encourage the sale. That happened to me when I was buying my cargo liner. I asked on the online forums if anybody knew when certain special dates were coming up and this little tip was shared with me. That's pretty neat to know. So I hope that you found that helpful and now let's hear a word from our subscribers. And now for subscribers tips. This week's subscriber tip comes from a subscriber after having watched last week's video on the windshield defrost hack. Hey Cheaper Jeeper TV, great video. I discovered this during a surprise frost here in Seattle last month. I thought that I needed to take it in to get serviced, but it looks like a common problem. I'm first going to try black electrical tape to find a good pattern and maybe make 3D printed plugs. I need to wait for the frost to come back first. Signed, My Blue JL. Hey, My Blue JL, thank you so much for writing in. Great to hear from you. Mind you, if you still have warranty left, I would recommend that you have it fixed under warranty. But for those of us who are out of warranty, we'd be very interested in your hack and how it turns out. Please feel free to share. Thank you very much. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope you found it helpful and informative. And if you did, how about giving this video a thumbs up? So until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Stay well, be safe, take care. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. So until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. <laughs>